Hello and welcome to my video where I will show you how to make a 3D wire and paper tree sculpture. And these are the things you will need. Some wire. The wire I use for this project is armature wire or just aluminium wire which is 1.6mm in diameter. The reason I chose aluminium wire is because it's really easy to shape and you can shape it with just your hands. You'll also need some pliers and some wire cutters. Obviously the wire cutters are to cut the wire and the pliers will be needed to shape the tree branches. It's best to use pliers that have a round nose, at least on one side. You'll also need some PVA glue. In this case I'm using some Mod Podge, but as long as it dries clear you should be able to use it for all of this project. Even though it's not vital, I would definitely recommend getting a leaf shape hole punch. For my leaf punch, I paid maybe about £3 and it really is worth the money just because otherwise you're going to be cutting out the shapes by hand and it just won't look as neat and also you're going to get sore hands. So definitely I recommend getting a leaf punch. And then of course you'll need some paper. In this case I'm using pages from an old book but you don't have to use book pages, you can use all sorts of different papers including sheet music and decorative scrapbook pages. Just try not to use too thick a paper because the thicker the paper the harder it will be to work with. I ended up using about 15 at least book pages for this project so that hopefully gives you an idea of the amount of paper you will need. In addition to this, you will also need a plastic container in order to mix your glue and water mix for the paper mache. You'll also need some sort of masking tape or painter's tape. Basically, you don't want a shiny tape that glue can't adhere to. You will also need a cheap paintbrush, some scissors and some scrap paper. All I used for scrap paper was just the regular paper I have in my printer. And because you're working with wire that has sharp ends and you're cutting it so it might fly up in your face, then of course I would also recommend safety glasses and if you are quite accident prone, some gloves as well. So the very first step is to make the main frame of the tree using the wire. You'll need to decide beforehand how tall and how big in general you want your tree because that will determine the size of the frame you want. My tree for instance ended up being about 22 centimeters tall but of course the bigger you want your tree the bigger you can make it you'll just need more wire and more paper. To make the frame you're going to have to cut at least five pieces of wire and to do this just straighten the wire as it comes off the reel and then cut a length that represents the length of the lower branch and the tree trunk length. For instance I'd like my tree trunk to be about 5 inches or 12 centimeters high and I want the lower branches of my tree slightly shorter than that at around 4 inches or 10 centimeters long. So adding those two lengths up the tree trunk length and the lower branch length gets me a total length of 9 inches or 22 centimeters. So now I cut 5 lengths of wire that are this long. The next step is to sculpt the tree trunk and to do this you take some of your scrap paper, in this case I'm just using regular printer paper and I roll it up into a cylinder that is slightly shorter than the height of tree trunk that I want. I use my painter's tape to tape the cylinder together and hold it in place. I then use the same tape to attach all of the wire pieces onto that tree trunk, all evenly spaced around the cylinder shape. So once you've done that you should have something that looks like this, which is starting to look a little bit like a tree. Once you've finished the lower branches, just try and shape the branches to make them a bit more realistic looking and then also splay out the very bottoms of the lengths of wire that are at the bottom of the tree trunk. 
You just need to curve the ends of the wire outwards so that the tree can stand up on its own. Then you can move on to making the inner branches of the tree. The more inner branches you have, the more full your tree will look. So it depends on your preference and what you want your tree to look like. With the main frame I use five pieces, which I would say is the minimum you should use. For the inner branches I used four pieces of wire, which again is the minimum I would use, otherwise your tree will look a bit too sparse. So for the inner branches I use four lengths of wire, and these will sit within the paper cylinder, and the wire ends will sit right at the bottom of the tree trunk. So once you've cut those pieces out, bend them slightly outwards at the top to try and mould them into a tree shape and then attach them best you can with the painter's tape. It's quite tricky to position them in place and keep them there, but try your best. You can always add a bit of glue if you like. And now we're going to add the small size branches that are going to come off the larger branches. So I start by cutting short pieces of wire and I added four of these smaller branches in total. Again, I just guesstimated how long I wanted these branches and tried to make them in proportion with the other branches. Make them on the longer side because you can always cut them down to size if you don't like the way they look. For each of these smaller branches, I cut the length and then use my pliers to make a loop in the centre. I fed this loop over one of the larger branches and tightened up the loop to try and keep that smaller branch in place. I found this to be an effective method but I, of course I also needed to tape it in place just to keep it secure. And try not to make it look too uniform you want different lengths of branch, different ways of shaping it, and you want to randomly scatter these smaller branches throughout the tree. So now we have three layers of tree branch. We have the lower branches, the inner branches, and then the smaller branches that crisscross over the others. You can add more layers of branches if you wish, it's completely up to you. Next is the paper mache step which sets the whole thing in place. So if there's any more manipulating of the wire you want to do, anything you want to add, any different positions you want to put the branches in, then now is the time to do it. There are a few ways of doing paper mache and you can use your favorite method or you can use the method I use, which is simply diluted PVA glue. So in a plastic container, I mixed two parts of PVA glue to one part water and I mixed this up using my paintbrush. You don't want to use a good paintbrush for this, just use a, a cheap old one. Then I cut up a handful of book pages into thin strips. So to paper mache what you do is you take a thin paper strip, you dip it into the paper mache solution, you run the strip between your fingers to get rid of any excess mixture and then you simply wrap that strip around the tree. I started by wrapping the book pages around the tree trunk first, so I started at the bottom and worked my way up the tree trunk. In hindsight, I wish I had added more shaping to the tree trunk by adding more scrap paper at the bottom of the trunk, just so it's splayed out a bit more rather than being straight up and down. So this is something you can add yourself during this stage if you want. So whilst you're doing this paper mache technique, if there are any places of the tree that you want to add bulk to, if you want to change the shape of anything, then you use scrap paper. So what I did was roll scrap paper around the branches where they met the tree trunks, because in real trees, this is where the branches are thickest. So you simply want to add realism by making the branches a different thickness nearer the tree trunk. If you're finding it difficult to shape your scrap paper, you could always use a thinner paper such as tissue paper or newspaper instead because it's just easier to work with. So I'm just going to show in fast motion now the paper mache technique and how I bulked out 
the branches before I added the paper mache strips. And once it's dry you can leave your tree just as it is or you can add one more protective layer of glue on the outside. This is not vital but I think it adds a nice finish. And the last step is to add the leaves. As I said before I would definitely recommend finding a leaf paper punch because it just makes your life so much easier and it's so much quicker. Otherwise you're going to have to cut these out by hand and that's going to take you some time. So what I did was I used my leaf punch on the book pages and just cut out loads and loads of leaf shapes. I then used my paintbrush just to add a little bit of glue to the stem of each leaf and position it on the tree. You don't actually need much glue to hold them in place. So just randomly scatter the leaves all over the tree until you're happy with the look. Leave it to dry and then your tree is finished. I really hope you had fun making this tree and thanks very much for watching.